thanks so much for joining me today. I'm Amanda. If this is your first time checking out the Essential Farms YouTube channel, welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And I'm so happy that you're here. Now I'm usually teaching my classes out at the yoga studio at the beautiful Essential Farms, but for the time being, I am shooting these videos, as you can probably tell, out of the comfort of my home. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So for today's practice and really any yoga practice, I always recommend having a blanket handy, um, a yoga strap and two yoga blocks. But if you don't have any of that extra yoga equipment, don't worry about it. You can absolutely still practice with me today. So uh, for centering today, for our uh, centering part of our practice today, uh, why don't we take a comfortable position laying down on our yoga mats? So I'm going to come off my blanket and I'm going to use this under my head for a pillow. And then I'm going to set my yoga strap out of the way off to the side. And I'm going to take my two yoga blocks and I'm going to use those to uh, rest under my knees. And I'll show you something, an, an alternative that you can do instead of, if you don't have blocks, um, instead of placing them under your knees. So you're just going to come to lay down on your yoga mat, extend your legs, and then you'll take your yoga blocks. I have mine at the second level and you're just going to use them under the knees like so. And then as far as hands go today, whatever is most comfortable to you, whether that's hands resting to your belly or just allowing your hands, arms to splay out to side body, palms facing up. Now, if you don't have yoga blocks, um, something else that you could do is come into constructive rest. Now, if you aren't familiar with constructive rest, let me just move these out of the way for now. You're just going to take feet to the sides of your mat allow the knees to fall in and support each other, okay? So finding either of those positions that works for you today. And hands, again, can rest to the belly or just allow hands, arms to splay out alongside body, palms facing up, allowing the fingers to curl in naturally. And go ahead and close your eyes. Feeling the earth beneath your body. Feeling the warmth of your hands resting on the belly. If you decided to rest that those there today. Noticing where clothing touches skin. Noticing how you're feeling today in body, mind, and spirit. And as we're taking note of how you're feeling today in those two departments, so to speak, I encourage you and invite you to allow your yoga practice to unfold how best suits you today and how you're feeling. And honoring your body in that way. Beginning to take nice, long, satisfying inhales, exhales through your nose. And 
Relaxing your face muscles here. Relaxing your tongue and jaw. Nice, long, satisfying breaths here. Noticing any sounds around you, birds chirping, maybe sounds from your house, the heat or air kicking on, refrigerator buzzing, sounds of outside traffic or maybe neighbors if you have any. Noticing those sounds and accepting them, like trying not to hold on to them, just allow them to create a tapestry of background sounds as you come back to your breath here. In the next few moments here, I invite you and encourage you to set an intention for your yoga practice today. You can do so by saying it three times mentally and gently letting it go. own time beginning to allow your eyes to gently flutter open and if you were using yoga blocks under your knees go ahead and set those off to the side out of your way and I'm going to take my blanket out from under my head kind of move that out of my way as well and then we'll take feet about hip distance apart knees up towards the sky and we'll just begin some gentle movement with our dynamic bridge pose. So as mentioned, feet about hip distance apart, hands, arms resting alongside body. Now, as you inhale, press into your inner heels as you lift the hips towards the sky. Now, as you do this, be mindful that your knees aren't frog-legging out to the side, but knees are kept in line with the hips. And we're going to take the arms overhead, reaching, stretching up through those fingertips. Exhale, release the hips, arms back to the earth. And again, inhale, lift the hips up, arms overhead, reaching, stretching, exhale it down. Just continuing with this movement at your own pace. If you'd like, you can always exhale it out through the mouth if that feels good to you. Also known as lion's breath. <clears throat> and even stick your tongue out. Taking one last round. No rush, but as you touch back down, we'll begin to add on Inhale, still lifting the hips up. 
dynamic bridge, arms come overhead. Exhale, lower the hips down. Take the knees to the chest for a nice squeeze, little rock from side to side. And inhale, shoot the toes up towards the sky, arms overhead. Exhale, we are back to the beginning again. Inhale, dynamic bridge. Exhale, curl up into a ball. Squeeze the knees to the chest, rock from side to side. Inhale, shoot the toes up, arms overhead. Just continue with this three-part movement at your own pace. And finishing up wherever you are at in the in your round and let's do one more round and no rush but as you finish that last round coming back to starting position and let's extend the left leg to the earth taking right foot either to the left thigh or the left uh, left knee or the left thigh. Let's extend the arms out from the shoulders for a twist, revolved stomach pumps. So shift your hips to the right. Inhale here. Now as you exhale, allow your knee to gently release over to the left. Right shoulder blade rooted to the earth. Look out over your right fingertips if it's not too much for your neck. Now stay here or see if perhaps you can bend your left knee. So my left heel's coming up towards my left buttock and see if by chance you're able to reach down and grab that left foot. If, you can, if you're unable to do that, no problem. Just reach in the direction of. Inhale, as you exhale, let's gently release back through to center. Hips back to center, arms out from the shoulders. Extend your right leg to the earth. Left foot comes to rest to left, I'm sorry, right knee, right thigh. Shift your hips to the left, inhale. As you exhale, allow your left knee to release over to the right. Looking out over left fingertips if it's not too much for your neck. And again, stay here if you like, or start to bend your right knee. See if you can take your left hand to catch your right foot. Inhale, as you exhale, let's release everything. Come back through to center. Take knees to the chest for a nice little squeeze. And releasing the knees to either side of the body to then use the strength of your hands, arms to gently push yourself up to sitting. Now, from here, we're going to come into something called eye of, or not eye of the needle pose. I don't know why I said that. Head of the knee pose. <laughs> totally different pose. Um, so you'll start by extending your legs out in front of you. And let's begin by taking and bending the left knee out from the hip. So my left foot is going to come to rest to my inner right leg. I'm going to flex my right foot throughout this uh, pose, throughout this stretch, turning the heart, heart lines up with your um, right knee. Now externally rotate the arms out from the shoulders. I have my couch that I'm running into, be mindful of your surroundings, reaching, stretching it up as tall as you can, 
Now, as you exhale, you'll lead with your collarbones as you fold over this right leg and allowing your hands, arms to rest wherever they fall today. So depending on what your hamstring uh, feels like today, it could be anywhere, um, hands can be anywhere resting along the leg, on the leg. You can grab the foot here if that's available to you or grab your yoga strap. If you don't have a yoga strap, men's top necktie works great, a scarf works great. You're just gonna take that yoga strap along the bottom of your foot like so, and that's gonna help allow you to gently sink in a little bit further here into this stretch. Now, pit of the belly here, lift it in and up. See, as you do that, you'll, you may notice that your collarbones kind of all almost automatically reach towards your toes, um, but it helps to keep this lower back from, from rounding here. I've had you here for quite a while. So pausing here for three, two, and one. Go ahead and gently release. Let's try that on the opposite side. So left leg extends, right foot connects to inner left leg. Turn your heart, heart lines up with your left knee this time. Externally rotate the arms out from the shoulders, mindful of your surroundings as you take those arms down, out, and up. Exhale, lead with the collarbones, pit of the belly lifts in and up. Again, allow your hands, arms to fall wherever they fall today. Relax your shoulders away from your ears. Steady breath here. Remember, move in harmony with your body, not against it. Looking for a good stretch here, but nothing painful. Typically, if you notice that your breath starts to quicken, it usually means you're, you're practicing with your ego and we need to stop that. Smooth, steady breath. Inhale as you exhale, gently release. Now, extending both legs forward for our seated forward fold. Now, if you noticed during um, those head of the knee post stretches, if your hamstrings were tight, or if you're in this position and you feel like you're almost going to kind of topple over backwards, I would recommend grabbing a blanket. If you have one handy, or of course you can pause this video to sit on. And that should help with that feeling of, oh, I'm about to fall over backwards. Now, as you come onto your blanket, if you're using one, notice where you're sitting. You wanna be more towards the front of your, of your blanket. So feet are flexed, spiraling the inner thighs. Now, once again, externally rotate the arms out from the shoulders. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, just like we did with our head of the knee pose, we're pulling the pit of the belly in and up as we lead with those collarbones. Hands fall wherever they fall today. Don't hesitate to use your yoga strap, men's necktie, or scarf around the feet here as needed. Inhale, as you exhale, gently release. Give your legs a good shake, shake, shake. And we'll practice that again. Spiraling the inner thighs, externally rotating the arms down, out, and up. And exhale. Folding into your seated forward fold. Drawing backs of thighs towards the earth. Connecting with the breath, connecting with the sensations in your body. Getting settled in here. And releasing in three, two, 
and one gently release shake 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 let's do that one more time as you're ready go for it moving into your seated forward fold Inhale, as you exhale, gently release. Shake the legs out. Excellent. Now, from here, coming into something called staff pose. So we're going to be opening the, the heart here, drawing the shoulders back, still flexing the feet, still spiraling the inner thighs. Now, taking hands behind you fingers can face to uh, fingers do face towards you excuse me spreading the fingers press into the hands sit up nice and tall draw the chest forward breathe inhale as you exhale go ahead and gently release and sweeping the legs all the way behind yourself to then come on to hands and knees. Uh, if you've practiced with me before, you know I like to take a little extra cushion under my knees with my blanket. So feel free to do the same. Uh, if you don't have a blanket handy, you can always take your mat and fold it back towards you. So knees about hip distance apart. Uh, usually in cow cat, we're resting palms to the earth here. I'm going to do something a little different today and make fists. Uh, resting on your fists do not feel good to you. Just come back to the more traditional way we have our hands again with palms to the earth and you'll just spread your fingers wide like a little, like little fans. Now pressing down through the palms, down through the fists so we're not just kind of hanging lifelessly in our shoulders. And as you're ready here, cow calf stretch. Inhale into cow. So lifting the sit bones. Belly releases towards the earth. Look up if you can. Exhale, we're rounding the back. Tuck the chin towards the chest. Belly button pulls up towards the spine. And again, inhale. Glide the heart forward, look up. Exhale. Continuing at your own pace. Now, if you're resting on fists, if your hands start to get a little achy in fists, of course, just release and come back to um, practicing with your palms open to the earth. Allow your next round to be your last round. And if you're on fists, go ahead and bring palms back to the earth, whether you were making fists or your palms were to the earth. Just go ahead and take a second, shake, 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 shake. The hands out here. And then from here, we are going to come into um, a high kneel for gate pose or parigasana and then right from gate we're going to transition into pigeons pose so for gate i'm going to start facing the camera so you can see what gate looks like from the side but then i'm going to spin so i'm having the um, i'm facing the short end of my mat so you can see pigeon pose better don't feel the need to go topsy turvy like like I am and follow which direction that I'm that I'm in. Just make sure that you um, are that you listen to what um, side we're doing because 
it might appear that it's changing up depending on what way that I'm facing. So just be mindful of that. And for pigeon, you may want a block handy just in case. Okay, so with that said, knees about um, hip distance apart, Parigasana gate pose. We're going to start by taking your right leg out from the hip, my left, but your right. Right heel lines up with left knee. Draw your left hip forward, but as you do that, try not to allow the chest to follow because we want the heart forward and open and in gait. Now press into the top of your left foot. That's gonna help keep your balance here. Externally rotate the arms out from the shoulders. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, let's reach and stretch. Remember, heart is open. Right palm can be up on the leg or down. Right foot can be flexed or stretch it towards the earth. Now this upper shoulder, draw it back. Extend out through that upper armpit all the way out through the fingertips. And breathe. Now inhale. As you exhale, let's come through to center here. Now this is our transition into pigeon. So as you exhale, you're going to take your hands to the earth. Now this right leg, my left, but your right is going to come behind you. Like, so you'll be like this in other words. Now from here, we begin to take that it'll be your left knee. Well, first of all, go ahead and drop that knee down. There we go. <laughs> now from here, you're going to take your left knee and slide it towards your left thumb here. Now we want the hips squared towards the front of our mat as, as best you can here. So press into those hands and draw your left hip back and back while this right hip comes forward here. And I personally like to make fists in my pigeon pose. If you've practiced with me before, you probably already know that. Um, I just feel like I'm able to press into my hands and sit up a little bit taller. So here we are in pigeon pose. Now, pigeon pose, depending on what your hips feel like, your pigeon pose might not look like my pigeon pose because our hips are, are different. Your pigeon pose might very well be up here, a little bit higher. The thing to consider and remember in pigeon pose is please, 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 make sure you're not just kind of rolling out onto this left hip and kind of hanging, hanging out here. We don't want that to happen. So sometimes if we have if we are here um, up a little higher or you feel like you are going to kind of topple over onto that left hip, take a yoga block. You could also use, I have a couch cushion here that I could grab and stick under that um, right, I'm sorry, your left sit bone, or you could even roll up a blanket instead to place under that outer sit bone, that left sit bone, to give yourself a little added support here. And again, I'm drawing that left hip back, right hip forward here. Pausing here for three, two, and one. Let's place hands under the shoulders Let's tuck the back toes under. We're gonna press up and back to downward facing dog. And from downward facing dog, as always, make sure your fingers are spread wide. Feel free to pedal the feet out here, stretch one heel down, then the other. Give your hips a wiggle from side to side, head a gentle shake from side to side, maybe up and down. And let's come into extended child's pose. So release your knees down, big toes touch, and we're going to sit, sink back in your extended child's pose, resting the forehead to the earth or a yoga block. 
active arms here. In other words, elbows aren't uh, resting to the mat, but they're lifting away from the mat. You may wish to come up onto fingertips here. Inhale, as you exhale, go ahead and bring your palms back through or back to the earth, lifting up the hips, release the big toes. Go ahead and take your knees about hip distance apart. Let's find our high kneel, relax your shoulders, and we'll go ahead and start that sequence starting from Parigasana gate pose. So once again, I'm going to face forward just so you can see our gate pose better. Now this is your left leg, but it's my right. Knee lines up with the heel. Hip comes forward, but heart stays forward. And not, in other words, we don't want the chest facing the leg like we did earlier. Nope, Parigasana gate pose, heart is facing open. Externally rotate the arms out, press into the top of your right foot to help keep your balance. Reach, stretch it up tall. Exhale, we side stretch by reaching stretching left palm up or down, left foot flexed or point the foot, draw your upper shoulder back, breathe. Inhale, come through to center, exhale, we take palms to the earth. So then this time your right knee, again, I'm gonna spin so you can see better. You know what, I'm gonna go this way. So your right knee, so we're like this, your uh, right knee, again, first drop that back knee down. This is going to make this next part easier. Your right knee then is going to slide towards your right thumb. I like to make fists here. Relax your shoulders. You can untuck your back toes. Allow your hips to sink towards the earth, finding your best variation of your pigeon pose. Take that extra support under that outside sit bone as needed. Left hip draws back, right hip forward. Pausing here and breathe. Inhale, as you exhale, if you're resting on fists, go and bring palms to the earth, spread the fingers downward facing dog, tuck the back toes under, press into the hands to find your downward facing dog. And release the knees down to the mat, as wide as feels good to you, take big toes to touch and sit, sink back, extended child pose. Come up onto fingertips if you like. And in your own time, bringing palms back to the earth if you're resting on fingertips. Let's pop up to downward facing dog once again. And before I pop up into my down dog, I'm going to move my blanket out of my way because we'll make our transition to standing in just a moment here. So as you're ready, go for it. Pop up and back to your downward facing dog. Now stay here in your downward facing dog, or if you'd like to try to come into um, side plank, what you'll do is you'll start to pivot onto your outer right foot and feet can be stacked here, or you can have the one foot stacked in front of the other, kind of a kickstand. 
shoulders stacked above the wrist, and we reach, woo, as I lose my balance, I would have fallen had I not had the couch behind me. As much as that couch gets in my way, I'm thankful it was there. Um, press into that bottom hand, reach those fingertips up towards the sky. Exhale back through to down dog. Pedal it out if you like. Remember, if side plank is too much. You can always stay in down dog or take a child pose. Pivot onto that opposite, outside of the opposite foot, shoulders stacked above the wrist, and pressing down through that hand. You can either reach the fingertips towards the sky or swoop the finger, the arm above the ear. Exhale through to down dog. And begin to walk the feet towards the hands or hands towards the feet. Now to give ourselves a little wrist release here. Well, first of all, you can circle the hands one way than the other, but we're going to um, take our hands, our palms, to the bottoms of our feet. So the bottom, we're bottom of foot to palm here, and toes come to rest in the wrist creases. Head and neck is heavy here. And carefully bend the knees, take the hands out from under the feet, and allow yourself to come on up to standing. Relax your shoulders, take a second, shake the hands out. And go ahead and release as you feel satisfied there. Now we're going to come into a high lunge. <clears throat> Excuse me. High lunge with um, Garudasana or Eagle Pose arms. So for Eagle Pose arms, I'm going to come towards the front of my mat and I'm actually gonna move this a little further away from the couch. And so from here, we're going to step the left leg back first. And I always like to start with hands to the hips for balance. So go and step your left foot back. One big step, couple baby steps, doesn't matter. However you get there is just fine as long as it's safe and mindful. Pressing down through your right ball mount of your big toe, pressing down towards the earth with your left heel. Now externally rotate the arms out from the shoulders. Let's take the right arm forward, left arm on top of the right, bending the elbows to turn the palms. Right hand comes towards the nose, left hand comes out and around. So we're palm to palm here. If that's too much, you can do back of hand to back of hand or give yourself a hug. Stay here or see what it feels like to take the arms up a little bit higher. Now, keeping our arms in these Garudasana arms, we're going to release the back heel down. So I'm opening up towards the front, bending into that front knee, and then releasing the arms, swooping them down out to then come into reverse warrior. Just like in gait, we draw that upper shoulder back. Be mindful that your knee's not falling in towards your big toe. To then inhale yourself through to center, uh, Virabhadrasana one, warrior one, <clears throat> excuse me. Most of the weight, <clears throat> excuse me, most of the weight is in the back foot. Inhale here to then lift your back heel, spin the back foot forward, and we're going to spin or twist rather towards that front knee, extend the arms out from the shoulders. I know it feels a little awkward, a little challenge for the balance as well. Gently unwind through to center, frame your front foot, 
big step forward with your back foot to gently look up, lengthen fingertips, or if that's too much, hands to the shins, knees, or thighs. Exhale, soften, bend your knees, head and neck is heavy. Reverse your swan dive, gentle arch back, and exhale, hands to heart center, Tadasana Mountain Pose. And we'll try that sequence on the opposite side. So hands once again to the hips. You'll step your right foot back, one big step, and a couple baby steps. Again, doesn't matter, you get there as long as it's safe and mindful. So then we externally rotate the arms out from the shoulders, palms face up. Take your left arm across the chest, eagle pose arms, right arm on top of the left, so they're crisscrossed, bending the elbows, turning the palms out, left hand towards your nose, right hand comes out and around. Stay here, or you can always inhale the arms up a little higher if you choose. And then from here, we release that back heel down. So we're, our heart was facing short end of the mat. Now heart faces long end of our mat. Sorry, my back is towards you now. That sometimes happens. So for reverse warrior, we release hands, arms to reach and extend out through that upper armpit all the way up through the fingertips. Inhale, arms up alongside the ears. <clears throat> Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. Twisting towards that front leg. Inhale, gently unwind through to center. Lift the back heel, spin the back foot forward, high lunge. Inhale, as you exhale, frame that front foot, big step forward with that back foot to gently look up, lengthen. Exhale, soften, bend the knees, head and neck is heavy. Reverse your swan dive, gentle arch back, and exhale, hands to heart center, to the Asana Mountain Pose. And releasing hands, arms along side body. We'll stay towards the front of our mat for our uh, Utkatasana chair pose and then move into um, four pose balance, also sometimes called standing pigeon. So for standing pigeon, just in case I'm gonna, my balance is a little shaky today. I'm going to set my yoga blocks towards the front of my yoga mat. Um, if you have books that are about the same width, well, you, honestly, you probably need a couple of books stacked up on top of each other. Um, or you've heard me say before, if you've practiced with me, soup cans, they work. I know it sounds strange, but it works. Um, that is so, if your your balance is still waver, you can place your hands here for support. Feet hip distance apart. Externally rotate the arms out from the shoulders. Inhale the arms up. Exhale into chair. So like we're sitting back in an imaginary chair. Now this is really common to have the chest kind of flop towards the earth or kind of as we lower the hips, the chest almost kind of wants to automatically do this. Try not to let that happen. Heart is open and lifted. Sit bones lifting towards the back of your mat, knees in line with the hips, all 10 toes are grounded. Now, if taking the arms up alongside the ears is too much, take your arms out in front, like what I call zombie arms, or you can absolutely keep hands to the hips or take hands to heart center. Breathe. Now, taking hands to the hips, begin to shift weight of the body into right side body. Take your left heel up, ankle comes to rest to right knee or right thigh. Flex your left foot. You can take arms here by the ears. Hands can stay to the hips, hands can be to heart center. 
If you'd like to challenge yourself a bit further, drop your elbows to the shin. Last but not least, maybe see if you can grab your right ankle, shin. Again, blocks are there if you need it. Inhale, as you exhale, release left foot down. And let's slowly come on up to standing so we're not, um, well, when we're turned upside down, I was gonna say so we weren't dizzy, but <laughs> shake the legs out. And let's try that on the opposite side. So starting from chair pose, externally rotate the arms out. Inhale the arms up on your exhale, chair pose. Allow the hips to sink, heart is lifted. Remember, if these arms don't suit you, take one of the alternatives. All ten toes grow, uh, grounded. Breathe. Let's take hands to the hips, weight shifts into left side body. Pick your right heel up, right ankle comes to rest. Flex your right foot, allow the hips to sink, relax your shoulders. Don't forget your alternatives if you choose to move a little deeper here. As you've had enough, as you're ready, release your right foot down, slowly coming up to standing and relax your shoulders. Let's take a moment here, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Close the eyes as you like. Now, in your own time, as you're ready, please allow your eyes to gently flutter open. And let's go ahead and interlace the fingers, take the palms towards the earth, and let's just inhale, take the arms up overhead. Thumbs towards the sky, pinky fingers towards the crown of the head. Exhale, go ahead and switch the interlace of your fingers up. Palms reach down, out and up. You can look up, it's not too much for your neck. And exhale. Taking hands to the hips, please come towards the center of your mat, stepping the feet out wide for triangle, base for triangle. Externally rotate the right toes out from the hip. My left, your right, uh, left toes slightly turned in heel to instep or heel to heel alignment. Don't forget to spiral the right thigh back so knee faces the same way of the toes. And as I fix my stance, there we go. You can extend the arms out from the shoulders. Inhale. Exhale from the waist, reach and stretch till you can't reach, stretch any further. Windmill the arms. And using the strength of that upper arm, the left leg, inhale yourself through to center. We're just going to switch the feet up and practice triangle on that opposite side. As you're ready, go for it. Inhale, exhale. And remember when we go past where we can reach and stretch, typically that's when the buns start to stick out, the chest drops to the floor, and our triangle looks something like this, which for alignment purposes, we want to keep the torso 
as much in line of the same in much of the same plane as this front leg so that's why we don't go past where we can reach and stretch that's your signal i like to say like to call it that you need to that you should windmill your arms there relax your shoulders now using the strength of that upper arm right leg inhale yourself through the center turn your palms up reaching stretching up towards the sky downward facing dog so to get there we bend into <clears throat> this front knee lift the back heel spin the back foot forward downward facing dog And as you exhale here, let's release the knees to the mat, big toes to touch, sit, sink back in your extended child's pose. If you'd like to switch up the hands, arms, try flipping your palms up towards the sky. And if you have palms resting up towards the sky, go and bring palms back to the earth, looking up towards the fingertips. Let's lift the hips up, release the big toes, and let's come into a gentle back bend. Sphinx pose. So legs are close, forearms resting to the mat, spread the fingers, shoulder stacked over the elbow. in here for three two and one taking feet wide to the corners of your mat stacking one arm on top of the other for crocodile pose just allow the weight of the body to be heavy and sink into the earth Now, in your own time, we will get ready and move into Shavasana, final relaxation pose. Now, believe it or not, um, I've had some students who stay in crocodile pose for their final relaxation. So feel free, if you're comfortable laying on your belly like this, feel free to do that. Or find your comfortable shape for final relaxation if you took any layers off during your practice you may want to put them back on so you don't get chilly laying still and uh, feel free to come back into either of those positions mentioned that we did for centering for shavasana and i'm going to do that actually i'm going to take my blocks under my knees but again, it's your practice, it's your shavasana. Make sure you do what feels good to you, because I don't know what you're gonna be doing, I can't see you. <laughs> so taking the blocks under the knees, go ahead and lay back as you're comfortable, or as you're ready, rather. And 
just like mentioned earlier, hands can be resting on the belly or just allow your hands, arms to sway up to side body, palms facing up. Close your eyes. Allow the weight of the body to sink, melt into the earth. Relax your face muscles, relax your tongue and jaw. While we have our attention at the lower jaw, maybe give it a little wiggle from side to side if you're holding any tension there to help release it. Relax the neck and shoulders and chest. Arms, hands, fingers, stomach and hips thighs, knees, shins, calves, ankles, and feet. Releasing any tension out through your toes. Enjoying the effects from your yoga practice today. And taking rest until I come to call you back. In your own time, beginning to bring small movements back to the body, wiggling fingers, toes, ankles, and wrists in any way that feels good to you. Drawing the arms overhead if you like for a full body stretch, extending out through the fingers all the way out through the toes, enlivening the whole body. 
And then as you exhale, carefully <clears throat> bringing feet to the mat, knees to the chest, gently rocking from side to side, giving your back a massage. And then to help wake up the nerve endings in the hands and the feet, go ahead and come back to center, back to stillness. And you're going to begin to rub the bottoms of your feet, palms together like this. And this helps to warm up the nerve endings in the hands and the feet. Or to waken, I should say. And then as you're ready, go ahead and roll to either side of the body. Just pause here for a moment longer. And using the strength then of your hands, arms to gently push yourself up to your comfortable seated position. Pausing here for a moment longer, noticing how you feel. Thinking of intention, dedication. And even perhaps mentally thanking yourself for taking time out of your busy day, busy week, to take some time for yourself, body, mind, and spirit. And as you're ready, reaching the arms up overhead for one last final stretch. And as you exhale, hands find their way to the heart, head surrenders towards the heart. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. I hope you embrace the sense of well-being that you've created for yourself and take that with you through the rest of your day. The light within me acknowledges and honors the light within you. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me for some Hatha Yoga practice today. I hope you enjoyed the practice and it left you feeling grounded and energized at the same time. Sorry for the noise. <laughs> when we were waking up from Shavasana, Miss Lucy, our rescued Greyhound, is in her crate right now and I think she wanted to, to get in on the, the action of the wakening up of the nerve endings. She was flopping around in her crate. So sorry about that. Um, but <clears throat> if you liked the video, enjoyed the video, please don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up, a like, and to subscribe to the Essential Farms YouTube channel because that helps for others to be able to find these videos and to follow along with us. So until next time, take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.